something resolved. In this case, I keep seeing you almost every month. This is case D388292, Dodds versus Dodds, set today. For return on reunification and medical arrears, counsel kindly your appearances for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Amber Robinson, bar number 10731, on behalf of Eric Dodds. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and welcome. Okay, I know that um, Mr. Tordy filed a motion very recently on um, mom's behalf to modify child support. There was no OST, so it's not on my calendar today. I did read it in case you guys want to stipulate. If you don't, I guess what I'm looking at is do you have agreements on what we are offsetting, if anything, against the health insurance and unreimbursed meds and the child support amounts that were filed? And... Um, I want to put mom on a work search if she's not working full time at her skill level. Judge, if I, I just followed, I don't know if, if Amber is ready to respond to all of that, but it's uh, it, it's not necessary to go over all that today. I mean, Amber and I have been attempting to resolve it, and there's a good possibility that we will prior to the time of the hearing. But I don't know about the reduction in child support, but um, on that note, though, and I just found out from my client. He is already scheduled to be on vacation August 1st. If we could maybe bump that hearing a week, if you don't mind. No yeah, we could, well, we could move it depending on, don't look for a date yet. We can move that depending on what is going to happen in this case. I don't want to have old home week with you guys every month. I need to know what's going on. Is the reunification happening? It is, Judge. Yes. It's going forward. The only issue that that's occurring in, I don't even know where. I, I think the most recent order of the court is from 2012 regarding visitation and holiday schedule and things of that nature. My client just informed me that uh, the plaintiff is taking the kids on a vacation for three weeks to Minnesota, and then he's going out of town for another week in August. The visitation schedule provides one week of vacation time a year per party. Now, of course, my client's visitation is modified at this point due to the reunification and things of that nature. <clears throat> but I don't know how and why plaintiff suddenly believes he can take a month of vacation during the summer. There's no agreement regarding that? Well, I mean, my client doesn't want to disappoint the children and not let them go on a vacation if they're looking forward to it. She's not 100% sure they actually want to go. But regardless, I don't want to put my client in the position of saying, no, you can't go. But at the very least, we need to work out some type mm -hmm. of... Even um, with regular visitation? We you? need to work out some type yeah. of... Uh, makeup time with regard to the therapeutic setting. I mean, the therapeutic setting is working, things are going well, but now to take off for three weeks, I'm not sure where two weeks. everything will be in. How is that possible that you can take that kind of time off from your work? Three it, whole it's weeks? two weeks, Your Honor. Okay. So oh, not yeah. a month. You mean well, three total weeks? It's three total weeks. Oh, so well, he's, weeks. he said three weeks and then another additional week, Your Honor. I was adding those together. It, it's okay. It's two weeks in Minnesota, which actually is less than what we've done the past three years that she's been aware of every year and she's never had an issue with it before. And then one week when? In San Diego, later on, in, that's when we'll be gone in, in August. So are you? It's, it's in defiance of the court order. Actually, I'm not no. saying we have a problem with it. What I'm saying is if it's going to happen, first of all, plaintiff shouldn't just say, this is what I'm doing. It should be a question, can I do this? But number two, it should be, okay, what are we going to do as a result? How are we going to make up the time? Make up the time? Well, right now, it's only like Frank said before, it's been no visitation to mom, and now we're in therapeutic setting. So, of course, my client would work around the therapeutic setting. And well, this was booked a long time ago when she was okay with it all these other years, and all of a sudden, that's really now not she's good. not. Okay, that's but really not what is she going to be missing, and how can we make that time? Yeah, as long as I'm getting information from counsel, or I'm hearing from counsel that we're going to schedule makeup time, my client has no problem. Who's doing it? Is it Marsha Lee? It is, right? Yes. yes. And is it go how's it going? I need to hear from everyone about how it's going. Well, it's going well with Nixon, Your Honor. The first couple sessions were hard. My client was dragging him there, but they, it seems to be going well. 150% support from my client. Um, so N Nixon is going well. The problem we are having, though, is with Ethan. And Ego ever? Yes. My, my client wants to suspend visitation and wants to get into therapy with Marsha and Jen because what we have is a parent over here that is supporting the reunification of Nixon and Jen. And we have Jen 
now seeing Ethan and talking to him on the phone, and we put them on notice in my letter to Frank several months ago, Eric put Jen on notice again that if you're going to be calling the kids, all phone calls will be recorded. So we have recorded phone calls, and Ethan also has a blog, and he will post some of this stuff on his blog. But mom calls dad's household a correctional facility, that dad is a narcissist. This was one of Ethan's blog posts he posted about. My mom says my dad is a narcissist. My mom has given me tools in how to cope with my dad. We have Jen telling Ethan, go through and delete all of our correspondence. Just last night, she was telling him, get out of the house. I will call you an Uber and um, you can come over to my home. We have mom and grandma telling Ethan on the, on the phone, just tell your dad we got back hours earlier from California that we were home by night. So we have mom and grandma encouraging Ethan to lie. We have Jen asking Ethan to record phone calls, and not phone calls, record conversations in the house. So anytime that Ethan comes back after a visitation with Jen, we have major attitude problems. He's just defiant against the whole family that he once had a good relationship with everybody, all of his siblings, excellent relationship with Eric's wife. So we have Jen coming in. And so this is just a snippet I'm going over on recorded calls. Has, we cannot, has Mr. Toad even provided those? To no, I, yeah, I just no. got things. No, and, and, and Judge, as far as last night goes, the, the, the text from Ethan said to Mom, I want to leave and walk to your house. Mom's response was, don't do that. Take, I'll call you an Uber. So she's supporting it. Was an Uber call? Well, I'm not going to oh, suspend oh, this visitation. I'm going to talk about what's appropriate and inappropriate and allow you to keep recording these because, Mom, you need to understand what is appropriate and what's not. If they have proof that you are saying any of these things, correctional facility, narcissist, those are all going to be in violation of the behavior order. If you're telling them to delete correspondence, that's in violation of the behavior order. You cannot destroy any electronic evidence under the behavior order unless we have an old one, and if we do, I'll change that immediately. Did I not change that when I saw you guys right after I got it done? Hold on. I don't think you did. I've been trying to change it every case because the new one does not allow that. If we don't have the new one, just pull out the new one and we'll get a new one. So what everybody, sorry, what everybody has wanted, though, in this case, Frank, the court, everybody, we, well, let's get Jen back in regular communication and regular mom's visitation. Have encouragement of lying you know, or telling the children to, or one of them to record conversations in the home, if there's proof of that, Mom, then that would mean you are being very inappropriate as a parent, and your time will be limited. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Your Honor. So I don't know what's going on and what's true and what's not true, but I trust that Amber has listened to these. I have not listened. He has them all recorded. I, I will listen to them, and I'll provide them to Frank. And Your Honor, uh, Marsha has, has, has listened to a few of them. I provided them to Marsha. She knew in one of the meetings when Jen looked at me and said, I never called your house a correctional facility, Marsha said after that, the good job not derailing the meeting and, and making the positive comments with Nixon. But she said, it, I have an email proof that she knew Jen was lying in the meeting about calling the house a correctional facility. Mom, you've got to work with the therapist about what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. These things, that's a good way of handling it, of giving the tapes to the therapist and having the therapist address it. I'm not going to limit mom's time. I am going to ask the therapist to weigh in and help mom understand what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Mom, you probably need a parenting class. Has she ever taken the, any of the free parenting classes? She has, Judge. Yeah. I'm, I'm not aware of her taking What did you any. take, Mom? I took the mandatory... Uh, not no, cope. Not cope. Not no, not cope. I took a parenting class when this all, well, a year after this began. Uh, Judge, I, I could be wrong. I thought I remember seeing an ABCs with parents. Well, right now we're into the teen years. So I would say either triple P's or staying connected with your teen would be appropriate. If she takes the one that requires the kids to go with them, then the kids should go with her, but dad should probably go too just to make sure everything's fine. I, I'm I'm saying take one of those two. Pick one of them. Stay. Triple P's or staying connected with your team. My marshal will give you guys copies of those that information. Mm -hmm. There there are appropriate and inappropriate things in conversation with children. Um,
kids can rebel, especially teenagers. They can act out. They can say things. They can do things that shouldn't be encouraged, that you should be getting on the phone with dad and saying, well, Ethan is saying he wants to walk over to my house. I'm telling him not to do that. Do you want me to send an Uber for him or do you want to talk with him and figure out what's going on? Not, I'm going to get on the side of a child and pull the child, you know, away. You've got to have some wherewithal and understand some things about parenting and co-parenting to be able to do that. And it seems like there's, I mean, you can't say these negative things. Even the old behavior order would prevent calling dad's house a correctional facility or calling him a narcissist. Telling him to delete correspondence, if that happened, that's very inappropriate. It, and it needs to stop. And, so. and, and, and mom is telling me that she denies all these things, so we'll have to li wait and listen to the video, but I think, or the audio. But Amber, you will provide that to Mr. Toad. Yes. But mom is hearing and understanding now that those types of behaviors are to occur. She's saying they're not, but they should continue to not occur if they're not occurring. Well, Marsha needs to provide, or Dad needs to provide all of it to Marsha, and Marsha needs to address it with Mom to the extent she thinks is pr appropriate. But let's say it is occurring, Your Honor, and we believe it is. How does Mom, as an adult, not know that that is inappropriate? What, like, why is she hearing that from you, that this is inappropriate? How does she not know, as a mother, raising children, that that is complete inappropriate behavior? Also almost has a master's in therapy. And all I would state is, is that if, if a therapist wants to address that with Mom, she can. Well, I'm asking Mom to take a parenting class more for the teen level and asking Marsha Lee to, to, to work with the parties relative to um, Mom's interaction with the kids. If it's inappropriate, she needs to tell her immediately what's inappropriate. Dad can keep recording. Mom, you must know that he's recording. And if you don't, you know, he's, he's had an order where he can at any time. And I'm really worried if there's going to be statements, you know, outside of a recording. So just please get some education around what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. Kids are not just little adults, okay? They are children with different developmental levels, and they can't have you, you know, supporting any kind of, neg you know, negative behavior that they're trying to take or encouraging the lit recording conversation it seems like it's in preparation for litigation and that's not okay to have kids involved with that and there's local rule that disallows that so I mean I know you'll talk to her Frank I know you'll listen to these and you will let her know if she's doing any of that her time's going to be limited if Marsha can't help you therapeutically your time may be supervised more alright so do you want another date well, your your honor. Just use the uh, Amber said that because dad's gonna be out of town, we need to move that date that's set. But if you if we want to just use that as a status check as well as the motion, we can. But what's happening with the arrears? I've seen you at least three or four times on these arrears. So I Here. I have a total amount. Frank called me with some payments that Jen has made, and um, one of them being she claims she paid Doc Nick Ponzo in full for something. Um, so I have the total amount of arrears. I am, my client is willing to whatever payment she has made through the child support office to credit those. We don't have those numbers, but I have the total amounts. But you're going to get an audit from the DA for any credits? Right. Because yeah. I, I didn't get anything from them other than just verbiage that this is, this is what she has paid. I, I never got a check or anything like I that. I thought I provided a printout. If I don't, I have it. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Usually let's like email it to you. If they can print out something. So, yeah, we're willing to give the credit, but does the judge want the total amount? Yeah. The total I'm, minus what, any credit. So if you get the DA's audit and you you agree, why don't you just do a consent judgment and not bring that back to me? And that's fine. I, I would like that. And that's fine. I re-ran the numbers today. I filed the full schedule of arrears in March, but I re-ran with April and May numbers. Also, given credit to the fact that Eric has a new baby, so health insurance has gone down on mom's end. Okay. So the total amount for health insurance through May 1st, 2017 is $5,871.32. That's more than you thought it was before. It used to be 5219 If you have interest included, I'm going to waive interest. You're going to waive interest? Yeah. Okay, so then that is not harsh, the, that's harsher. not the correct Thank number, you. Your Honor. So get me a number without interest. Without interest 
is 5,571.45 cents. Okay. So that's included in all okay. of it. And then for child support, do you want interest and penalties on that? No. $10,530.51. Okay. And that covers the period from September 15th through uh, what, May? May 1, 2017. Okay. And then you'll look at it with Frank, with the DA audit, and give her any more credit, and then do a consent. Judge, we're not talking about a lot as far as offset goes. She's made some nominal payments to the DA's office, and then again, there was an order regarding uh, one payment to Ponza, to uh, Mr. Ponza, where I believe it was Dad was to pay 75% and Mom to pay 25 or vice versa. Mom paid the entirety of it. Now, Ms. Robinson is indicating that Dad paid his share. We just need verification of that. And, and if he did, I, then there's got to be a discrepancy somewhere else because my client did pay the full amount. So Okay, but I'm not reducing anything to No, me. not today. No, not today. I mean, that's not the issue. The only issue is going to be if the you know, plaintiff is arguing that there shouldn't be a reduction in child support, uh, that's going to be what our argument is. I'd like to move it up to July if we can find a date in July for that August 1 motion date. Or has anybody gone in July? No. That last Friday was on. Oh, no, actually, it's Saturday, Saturday. Night. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. What's the date, Madam Clerk? July 11th. I am, frighteningly, I am on vacation. I just said it. Anyone gone in July? <laughs> the the, the right. tenth through the fourteenth, I'm gone. Okay, we will find another time. Okay. Uh, are you back by the eighteenth? I will be back on the eighteenth. Okay. I'll be gone. So You're gonna be gone? Yes. Okay. I remember. Okay. Guys, don't be shy when I say, "Is anyone gone in July?" <laughs> uh, what about we can do the end of June. Let's just do the end of June. I'd rather get this over with and I do, I'm, I'm gonna get these guys off my docket. Well, I, your Honor's not going to be happy with me, but my client is interested in just setting trial. So the court can hear these conversations. Just, uh, I, I don't know how healthy Jen is. We, we still There's have... No I'm not going to set a trial before somebody works with her therapeutically. He needs to provide those to the therapist, help... That's, that would be the outcome of the trial. I would ask a therapist to help her understand what communication with children is appropriate or not. I'm not going to be able to teach her that. You're not going to be able to teach her that. She's not going to have her rights taken away. So that has to be re rectified through remedial efforts. She's in a remedial situation now. And then at the March hearing, the court directed her, get a psychiatrist for your medication. I guarantee you mom still hasn't done that yet. Yes, I have. Who's your psychiatrist, Mom? Um, I had to go through <clears throat> my primary to get a referral, and it took a long time to get a referral because of the insurance I have, but I just got the letter of the doctor that I have to go through BHI first and get an assessment before I can see um, the psychiatrist. So I have to go through behavioral health care options. When did you get that letter? Um, I got it in the mail. What's the date on the letter? May 24th, but I requested from my doctor, because I see my doctor only once per month, that does my medication management, and I told him you would like me to see a psychiatrist. So he put in for the referral at my last appointment, which was m May 16th at 10 a.m., and it's highlighted here if you want to see it. No, I trust you guys. It's on there. Psychiatry referral evaluation and treatment referral status. All right. Okay. okay, well, it sounds like she's moving you forward. Stay on. Okay. I do not want to set a trial right now. I need to have adequate cause to set a trial, and I don't have it unless mom's still doing inappropriate things after she's done working with the therapist. Then you have cause for a trial. Okay. All right. So what date? Um, you were looking at dates at end of June? Yep, please.
and then any response to Amber wants to file or any counter motion. And then counsel to work on a consent judgment regarding the arrears. Get an audit from the DA's office, and usually they can email it to you. Okay. Anything else I need to address in this hearing? Or is that okay? Um, okay, so what um, my client would like would be, um, if we're not going to limit her visitation, then we would like it ordered that the two parties go to therapy with Marsha and Ethan. You mean dad and mom? Well, like I'm going to order that Marsha address it and that you, you I mean, you basically can There's talk to her. I'm not going to tell her mom. what to do. She may say she's not going to work with these two as the clients, you know what I mean? That she can tell mom in terms of her reunification role, that would be normal to talk about what's appropriate, what's inappropriate in parenting. But to put the two of them in a room and say, you're going to now address this couple, you know, as your clients, I don't know that she's going to want to do that. That would be a dual role. So I would just say, talk to her, see how she's willing to handle it. If she can't handle it appropriately, then she should recommend a different therapist for mom. So that mom and dad can talk to that person and mom can have that therapist and dad could be brought in as an adjunct, as her therapist's adjunct. You know what I'm saying? I have a separate, excuse me. You already have a therapist? Yeah, and then we brought an updated letter for me. And maybe she'll say it'll be more appropriate to do it through mom's therapist. We just need to ask her. I can't tell a therapist how to handle their caseload, especially when you're asking, when we're switching clients, basically. She's... She might feel like that's a conflict or a dual relationship kind of a thing. We can ask for her to work with Ethan more on what's been going of on. Of course, yeah. Those are the kids. So, yeah. But in terms of taking on the two of you guys, and I mean, talk to her and see what she's willing to do. Just I don't want to order something and tell her something that she may say, look, I don't feel comfortable doing this. I know the judge ordered it, but I'm not going to do it. Right. She may have some her own ethical concerns. So... She knows what the problem is, and both counsel can talk to the therapist if you want, have a joint telephonic conference with them and say, look, this is what's going on in court every other month that we see the judge, I and mean, this is what we talk about. These are the concerns. She doesn't want to set a trial. She wants to see if the mom and um, the children can have uh, appropriate communication without that, and if not, then we'll have a trial if it continues. What are you willing to do in the meantime, and who needs to be present, and is this a conflict for you? Do you know what I mean? Just see what she thinks. Because I don't want to dictate how she runs her practice. It's 1130 on the 27th. Yes. I think that covers everything. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, guys. Can minutes suffice? And if not, who's going to do an order? Um, minutes suffice with me. And Madam Clerk, I apologize. So the 27th at what time? 1130. 1130? Okay, thank you. All right, you guys. Have a good afternoon. You too.